Today is May 25th, 2023. My name is Melissa Ackerman, and I'm going to be interviewing Bill Finkelstein. How are you today, Bill? I'm great. Thank you for asking. Great. Um, just wanted to find out where you grew up, uh, a little bit about your family, a little bit about your history. Uh, I'm originally from Austin, born and raised there. Went through public schools, University of Texas, uh, for undergrad and uh, ended up being the sole and only Jewish student at Baylor School of Law. And when, when did you graduate? I graduated from UT in uh, 71, then law school in 74, and then spent one year in Austin as a law clerk for the Supreme Court of Texas and, and, and married a Dallas girl and moved to Dallas in 1975. And were you involved in any Jewish activities when you were growing up? Uh, not particularly. We were, Austin had a fairly small Jewish community, had a Reformed temple and a, I call it a conservadox synagogue. We belonged to the shul and it was a very close-knit community uh, in, in Austin. It was the type of, the type of community where if you uh, broke a window with a baseball, seven moms would call your mom and tell rat you out, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So you met um, somebody from Dallas, and you you want to talk about that a little uh, bit? Absolutely. So um, at UT, during the very first, well, at, as a matter of fact, before classes even began, they had an institution called Pledge Lines, at which the girls, after they had pledged sororities, had an open house, and the actives and the fraternities would bring the new pledges to the houses to introduce them around. And so before classes had even begun, uh, I was introduced to my wife, Jerry, who was a Goldberg. Uh, and we started going out. We dated all through college and got married uh, about two weeks after graduation before we started law school. Wow. And then you moved up to Dallas at, uh, after law school? At, after, after law school and, and our clerkship. OK. And you have a family? I have three grown daughters and eight beautiful grandchildren. Do they live here in Dallas? All, now they do. That, that, was a, that was a task for my wife. We had one daughter who was living in London, which gave us the opportunity to visit London a few times. But after the grandbaby started arriving, Jerry put her advocacy uh, in high gear and uh, convinced her son-in-law uh, that it was time to relocate to Dallas. And she did the same thing with her middle daughter, Lisa, who was pursuing her career with her family in Manhattan. Uh, but COVID kind of expedited their move to Dallas. So we, everybody's in Dallas today. Oh, that's great. Um, how did you get involved in Federation work? Historically, uh, as a young couple, one simply got involved with Federation. The, when you came to Dallas, you joined the synagogue or a temple, you joined the JCC. If you had kids, you put them in the preschool or they went to summer camp or gymnastics, and you got involved with Federation. And we just followed the crowd, and that's how that was our involvement initially. Okay. Over the years, I limited uh, my involvement to campaign, to raising funds, and uh, missions because I feel it is vitally important that we get American Jews to visit Israel and to maintain that strong support between the American Jewish community and our brothers and sisters in Israel. How many times have you been? At least six or seven. Mm -hmm. That's great. And uh, what, was the fed what is the Federation's name right now? It has had several different names over the years. Uh, Officially, it's the Jewish Federation of Greater Dallas, but we're, in our marketing materials, we are rapidly morphing over to Jewish Dallas. Mm -hmm. And when did you serve? I, I still serve. I, I have uh, about six weeks left on my term as board chair. I came in two years ago, and it's a two-year term, and at the annual meeting that's set for next month, I will pass the gavel to my successor. And we promise not to show any of this to anybody before your term is completely okay. over. And what was your title? Chairman. What has been your title? Chairman of the board. Okay. And um, who were some of, some of the different leaders during your tenure? 
Well, Carol Aaron had, was, has been a board chair and been very active in missions and very active in the major gifts division. My predecessor, A.J. Rosemarin, was board chair before me. Uh, Jeff Rosansky was the board chair before me. Dan Prescott was. Uh, David Veter worked with all those people. Uh, Steve Waldman, many, many people. Mm -hmm. And how large is the board right now? 36, I believe. And do you still have representatives from, um, at one time there were all the rabbis and all the, all the constituent agencies and everything. No. Who, what is the, uh, how is the board comprised? The, the, the current configuration of the board of directors are the officers, chair, four vice chairs, secretary, treasurer, and the immediate past chair. And there are 15 elected directors, five of each of whom serve for three years, staggered terms. So every year we elect five new ones. And most recently, the chairs of most of the major committees have a seat uh, on our board. The only individuals who sit on our board uh, because of their association with other agencies are the board chair of the foundation and the uh, chair of the rabbinical association. Okay, what's the relationship like? Uh, what has it been like between Federation and the synagogues and temples? It's very good, as a matter of fact. I, I think that in prior years, uh, we tended to stay in each other's respective lanes and the synagogues had their religious school and they had their types of activities and the Federation had its types of activities and the JCC had its types of activities. Those lines are rapidly changing because of the complexity uh, of the Jewish community. And how, have, how has the Jewish community changed? Well, to, be, to begin with, there is uh, less affiliation with congregations, uh, more, and those who are affiliating are no longer joining the traditional three or four congregations that were in the city. When I moved here, there were Temple Emmanuel, Sheret Israel, Tiferet Israel, and actually Temple Shalom was considered sort of a newcomer way back then. Certainly they're not today. Over the last 40 some odd years, we now have probably 25 plus congregations uh, in the city. And, and so people are affiliating with many, many different groups. And of course, unfortunately, many, many more are not affiliating. And my d children's generation, I, I say is less uh, focused on bricks and mortar. Mm -hmm. And they're more focused on programming and activities and they pick and choose that I want religious education here and I want social here and I want religious services there. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a different environment that we're all having to adapt to. Mm -hmm. Were there some coalitions with organizations outside of the Jewish community during your term? O outside of the Jewish community? I would say that's not been a, a, a major component in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. We are working with Jewish organizations much, much more frequently than we have in the past. Uh, and I, I think the philosophy has been, it's certainly been my philosophy, that we need to make one and one equal three. And if there's an organization that has a presence in a particular area or with a particular demographic, we need to partner with them. We need to bring our strengths, whether it be financial or marketing or manpower, to the table uh, with their contacts because at the end of the day it's all about community. You put in your notes ENT. Oh well that that's an example of building some coalitions. What is that? Well uh, security. Okay. That, which is something that we never dealt with five seven years ago. It's now a major priority of the Federation. Mm -hmm. We are raising a tremendous amount of money for Federation. We are now uh, making a lot of security grants to help harden the facilities at which Jews gather, whether that's a center or a school or a synagogue, as the case may be. And just recently, one of the things that we accomplished is we got six religious organizations together, all of whom are in close proximity to one another, 
and uh, we got them to form a co-op. So on a collective basis, they can have uh, off-duty police and a patrol car on Friday nights and Saturday mornings. And many of those organizations are relatively small and they don't have the financial wherewithal to mm -hmm. each have their own uh, security officer. And so now we have one uh, roaming the neighborhood with a very high uh, profile. It, it's To me it's an example of the Federation being able to convene various agencies who themselves may not think of it and, and do it themselves. And we are proud to help fund part of that initiative. Mm -hmm. And also do some training for different people, oh, for different agencies yes. and the community at large? Right. Our Federation is blessed to have a full-time security director who's a retired deputy uh, police chief from Dallas. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, his everyday routine is to meet with organizations and he performs uh, security assessments to, to consult with the agencies, to educate them on how they can improve their security, where do they need locks, where do they need cameras, what should be the protocol to allow entry, and he writes those up which are critical to those agencies getting uh, federal security grants. They need written documentation uh, to, to support those things. And we as a community provide that service to any Jewish organization uh, that needs them. And we helped identify a grant writer. And the Federation even funded part of the front end money mm -hmm. to retain grant writer. We were fortunate enough to bring in a little in excess of $1.4 million in federal money last year. It will help these organizations with fencing, with locks, with bullet resistant glass, with security guards, etc. It's got to be a very expensive endeavor, endeavor to keep it safe. Well, that's that's just federal money. The, yeah. Our federation has spent a couple of million dollars mm -hmm. in security grants over the last year or two itself. Mm -hmm. Were there any significant local or national or international events that had an effect on um, your time in office? Oh yeah, how much time do you have? <laughs> got, got time. <laughs> during, during my two years, mm -hmm. we lost our CEO. Uh, we had to mount a search uh, during COVID. We were fortunate enough to recruit and bring to Dallas Igor Alterman and his family. And he's now completing uh, this month, his first year uh, as our CEO. And it's been a, a very important important milestone for our community. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the COVID crisis where the building was in effect shut down and we had to figure out how to allow people to work remotely from home. Uh, many of us, especially those of my age, were used to walking in the building and sitting down to talk with people and we had to learn how to Zoom and catch up with people and work remotely. Then we had a few weather-related incidents. We had a storm in New Orleans. Uh, I think it was uh, two days before Rosh Hashanah. Uh, or that was New Orleans, perhaps. They had a flooding in New Orleans. We mounted emergency appeals to aid the communities of both, uh, those, both of those communities. Houston. We actually sent uh, hot meals uh, to Houston of Erev Rosh Hashanah that were distributed from the JCC and the Hebrew Day School there. We similarly sent uh, meals to New Orleans when they had their power outages and flooding. When Surfside building, uh, the, the condominium building and Surfside collapsed, we mounted a special yeah. appeal. In Miami? In, in, yes. Okay. In the suburb of Miami, mm -hmm. exactly. And uh, there was a tornado in Kentucky, which, as you might suspect, has a fairly small Jewish community. We nonetheless raised a lot of funds and sent it to the Red Cross and to the Chabad of Kentucky to help mm -hmm. victims there. So we, and then, then there was a small little war in Gaza, and we had the public relations uh, issues to deal with and to mount uh, support for Israel in that time. Mm -hmm. And then there's been the war in Ukraine, which is now 12, 13 months into its uh, sad cycle, mm -hmm. and we've raised a lot of money. Dallas, I'm proud to say, uh, raised funds the first week of that conflict, and we paid for our, one of the very first airplanes. In Ukraine? In, that's in what Ukraine. you're speaking about. Okay. We, 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 we 
paid to have a plane load of medical supplies and food flown to, I think it was to the Romanian border, mm -hmm. and unloaded those supplies for the community and for anybody who needed them. And rather than sending the plane home empty, we filled it with about 240 Olim, people who left the Ukraine and made Aliyah to uh, Israel, and those efforts uh, continue. So all in all, it's been a very uh, unorthodox term that I've had. Yes, it has been. Um, what was the relationship between, what has been the relationship between Dallas and Israel during your time? I, I think it's been very, very good. Uh, certainly there are differences in the generations. Uh, my generation has grown up as a staunch support base for Israel. Uh, I think the younger generations have less of a, an, an uh, association with the country, and that's one of uh, the tasks of our federation, is to work on that. Uh, but it's positive. It's, it's, it's very, very positive. I think the biggest challenge that we have is to assist the campus organizations, most especially, in preparing our college-age youth to deal with the pro-BDS mm -hmm. movement that, unfortunately, is present on a lot of college campuses today. Have there been any missions to Israel during your time? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we came back in late November or 1st of December, perhaps, of 2022, uh, where we led a pace setter mission, first to the UAE and then to Israel, which was a wonderful experience. We were one of the first groups to go to the UAE after the signing of the Abraham Accords. And, how, how many did you take on that trip? Uh, I believe it's 22, 23 people, mm -hmm. mostly couples. Mm -hmm all for the major gifts division. Uh, it was it, very exciting to see the rapid growth of Jewish life in a Muslim country. And uh, we, we saw no anti-Semitism there. We saw Israeli businessmen right and left. Really? Okay. Uh, there are direct flights between Tel Aviv and Abu Dhabi. Uh, there are seven kosher restaurants in the United Arab Emirates. There's a chief rabbi of the Emirates, the Jewish life is flourishing there. We went to have a, a, a pre Jewish preschool there we visited. Wow, that, that's really something. Okay, what an eye-opening thing. And, and a couple of years before that, we had a pay center mission to Gibraltar and Morocco. And this coming November, we have a community mission to Israel. And how many are do you hope to take on that trip? as many as we can sign up. <laughs> but I, I suspect it'll be three, perhaps four buses. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's a nice size. Um, and did you also do some programming for teenagers to go to Israel? Yes. Uh, that's really one of the most important milestones during my chairmanship, at least in my opinion. Uh, as many people would know, we for many years had a teen tour. And it stopped when the Intifada erupted about 18 years ago and about a year and a half ago we looked around and we said what the devil happened to the teen tour so we resurrected the teen tour and launched it last year mm -hmm. and we worked feverishly and obtained uh, some financial support from the Route 1 f group foundation and so our Teen Tour is heavily subsidized to make it affordable to teens in Dallas. And many of our donors have stepped forward and said, how much do you need? Let me That's help. Great. We have to get kids to go. So the second Teen Tour will leave next month, or perhaps it's the first part of July. I don't have the exact launch date. I should know. My grandson will be on it. <laughs> okay. You'll know. <laughs> Very important that we get our teens to Israel. That's great. So it, it was... The program was non-existent for 18 years? 17 or 18 years. Wow. That's such an important thing. Too. Um, what changes have you experienced in Federation over the years? Wow. I, I would say a very important change in outlook is that we have an emphasis 
on funding needs, articulated needs in the community that we believe will have an impact on the community. Whereas in prior years, the emphasis had been on a campaign where we funded agencies. And those funds to the agencies were largely in unrestricted dollars. That has definitely changed. Our PA and our board now place great emphasis on what we call impact grants. We earmark funds for specific causes that we believe are important for the growth and the viability and the safety uh, of the Jewish community. And I might add, one of the reasons we do that is because that resonates with our donors. It's much easier to sit down and talk with somebody about the number of kids we send to summer camp, the number of kids we send to Israel, the number of Meals on Wheels that we deliver to seniors, the number, uh, the, the perimeter lighting that we fund for a school for safety, than it is to say we wrote a check to this institution. It's a total sea change in the way we allocate funds. So did the different organizations make their uh, requests and um, formal requests to the P&A? Oh, yes. And it, then it, you decide based on that? that yes, the, the process is uh, a, a lot more uh, complicated today. I believe this current cycle we had about 90 or 95 requests for grants. Uh, so, some agencies have obviously more than one grant request, so it's a lot of work for our p &A to actually decide where is best to invest our money. How much was raised last year? Well, interesting. Uh, last year, only having recruited a CEO and who only showed up about 30 days before we closed the campaign, and by the way, we did not have a chief development officer. We raised uh, 10.4 or 10.5 million dollars for our, our general campaign, mm -hmm. which was an increase over the pr prior year. And so we did it thanks to the efforts of some very dedicated volunteers. They are the backbone of the campaign. And this year we're actually going to surpass that total. We have already surpassed it. Did you take a big hit during COVID when people were so... No, um, not at all. That's Not great. at all. Now, we had fewer donors. A lot of the people who had been making rather modest donations on a relative basis were suffering financially. And, and if they weren't necessarily suffering financially, they were unsure as to the future. So they were naturally uh, a bit more concerned about how much mm -hmm. they could give to tzedakah. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that the people who were financially secure recognized that and stepped up to the plate and so the major donors gave more, a lot more than they had in the past. And they're maintaining that? Yes, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that the the Dallas Jewish community has spread out? How is um, House Federation dealing with the fact that it's not just one neighborhood, it's... it's How are we dealing with it? Not fast enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I would say that those of us who have been involved in Federation for many, many years, it's very hard for us to really come to grips with the fact that the Jewish community is no longer concentrated south of LBJ. There has been a, just an explosion of people moving here from California, New York, Connecticut, etc., Florida, not so much Florida, seeking a better economic environment, a more pro-business uh, environment, a less taxed environment, and less crime-ridden environment. And those people are not simply going to 75225 and 30, etc. And they are going farther north to areas which was farmland when I moved to Dallas, Texas, because there's new housing, it's more affordable, the schools are new, the crime rate frankly, is a little better out there, et cetera. And we need to adapt. I mean, the, the, one of the hallmarks of my administration is to urge, I haven't been all that successful, mind you, that we have to engage people where they are willing and on terms that they're willing to be engaged, which means we've got to go north. Mm -hmm. And we're making movement. We're making progress. That's yeah, a big challenge. 
um, is do you think that Dallas is a cohesive community or divisive or can you find another word to describe I, okay. the Dallas Jewish community? I, I would not call it divisive, no. I would say unfortunately it is more polarized. Just like the general population of the United States is polarized politically, so too unfortunately is the Jewish community and that is politically and religiously as well. Uh, if one looks at the demographics and the Pew studies, etc., it's very easy to see that the middle of the road is contracting hmm. and that the very secular side of the community is growing and the more traditional side of the community, the modern orthodox, or there's the traditionalists, is also growing exponentially as well. And from my perspective, the sweet spot of the Federation has been the middle of the road. And so we have to adapt what we're doing to make our activities and to fund the needs of the right and the left more available because that's the future of the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. In, your relation, in relation to your time at the Federation, of what are you the most proud? Uh, I'm most proud of launching the team tour that we spoke about a moment ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I am very proud of the fact that we have widened the representation on our board of directors, uh, demographically, religiously, uh, etc. We have people from outlying communities, we have newcomers. Uh, to Dallas and we are spreading out. We have to have people from Frisco and Allen in leadership and we're working very hard and, and we're making great strides. Uh, and the way that we've allocated money has been a three or four year process and we continue to do that. And that, that's important. That's important to make sure that we're investing the money with the organizations that our donors feel are important. Mm -hmm. And are there any special experiences or stories during your tenure that you would like to share? Oh, well. Most of my just don't know that I won't repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> any, anything about where you, you know, your youth or things that you've been involved with that have brought you to this point in your, in your volunteer career or your professional career? Well, I, I married into a family the Goldberg family that has strong, deep community roots, whether it's coaching softball at the J or active at a synagogue or active in Israel bonds, federation, it doesn't matter. And that had an impact on me because I saw the commitment of their family and, and I became immersed in the Dallas Jewish community. And federation has been very important to me because it represents or it must represent the entire community. Uh, a particular congregation needs to look out after its members or its potential future members, but we're there to represent everybody. A temple or synagogue worries about its Sunday school. We need to worry about Jewish education for all of the children in the community. We need to worry about the needs of the seniors throughout the community. And so we need to be the central address for the Dallas Jewish community. And, and that to me is absolutely vital. Okay. Anything else that you'd like to talk about today? Safety. That, that's, we mentioned it earlier. The Jewish community is under, threat, under, under siege and it's our role as the leaders of the community to make all of the organizations aware of that threat and to do everything that we can to strengthen and to protect those agencies. And that's more than the funding, which, which we're doing a lot of, but we have to build awareness. We have to work on coalitions with the government. We have strong ties with the, the governor. 
In fact, we have members of our Dallas Jewish community that sit on the governor's uh, commission dealing with hate and anti-Semitism, and they work with the legislature to provide additional funding. And uh, that's not an area that traditionally I was involved in, but it is just vitally critical for the health, safety, and welfare of Jews here and everywhere. Thank you so much, Bill. Enjoyed okay. visiting with you today. Okay.